I would consider myself the king of useless Pokemon facts, but this has got me thinking about the opposite. What about the Pokemon facts that are actually useful to know? Things that would come in handy while playing the games or doing something else Pokemon related? Well, here are 20 useful Pokemon facts this time. Hopefully you guys will find at least one of them to be helpful somehow. At the beginning of most older Pokemon main series games, if you check the PC, there'll be a free potion inside. There's also some characters at the beginning that give you free items, including this character at the very beginning of Red, Blue and Yellow, who also gives you a free potion. So I guess what to take away from this is, talk to literally everyone you come across. Or you might just miss out on something cool like a TM or other useful item. Pokemon has done a pretty good job to make sure that players can't get softlocked anywhere in the game. For example, if the player is in an area that can only be left via surfing or flying, the game will make sure the player isn't able to release every Pokemon they have that can learn an HM that's needed to leave. In an extreme case, where the player doesn't have any Pokemon that can learn Surf, for example, in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, if the player is stuck in Cien Wood City, there's an NPC that'll give the player a tentacle for them to teach Surf to. And the best part about this is, the tentacle apparently has a chance to be shiny. So, another shiny hunt for any shiny hunters out there looking for one. If you're not bothered about which starter you pick for each game, and just want to get through as quickly as possible, here are some tips on which starter is probably the best to pick for each region. For Kanto, your best pick is probably Bulbasaur. It breezes past the first two gyms, resists the third gym, giving you plenty of time to catch Pokemon for the rest of the game. In Johto, Chikorita is definitely the worst, being weak to the first gym, and given how terrible Meganian's move pull is, making Cyndaquil and Totostyle much better. For Hoenn, Mudkip is objectively the best starter, with Swampert only having one weakness, and being used by most speedrunners. For Sinnoh, the optimal choice is Chimchar, with Infernip's amazing move pull, type coverage, being super quick, as well as being an absolute boss. For Unova, you should probably avoid Snivy, like Meganium its move pull is terrible, Superior is just not fun to use. Best choice is probably Umbar, since it can lend its gold. That's really cool. Kalos the best pick is probably Froakie. Greninja is extremely quick, hits hard, great move pull. For Alola, all the starters are really slow, but the best picks would be Litten or Populeo, Incineroar having a great move pull, bulk resistances, as well as Primarina, plus the fairy type. For Gala, it depends on the version you pick. Sword version, probably Subble, where Score Bunny is better in Shield. And for Scarlet and Violet, the best Pokemon to start with is Lechonk. You ever been in a situation where you're struggling against the first gym leader because your starter is incredibly weak to them? One of the best examples being Pikachu in Pokemon Yellow, having an absolutely terrible time against Brock's rock and ground types. Well, there are actually some Pokemon that can help you out in this situation, one of them being Nidoran at the very beginning you can catch, since it learns Double Kick. In terms of other games that have some super cool early catches that you might want to consider, Pikachu can be caught in Viridian Forest and Kanto, Ralts can be caught super early on in Hoenn, in Route 102, the same area that Wally catches his Ralts, and Riolu can be caught in Flockacy Ranch, in Unova, near the very beginning of Black and White 2, which means that you can use the Lucario in Unova way earlier than you can in Sinnoh. If you're playing through Pokemon for the 100th time, or even something like speedrunning or shiny hunting, here's something you can do that will make make things a little bit quicker. Simply turn off move animations. Now most people keep them because they look cool, and it makes battling a bit more exciting. But for things like shiny hunting and speedruns, it really does make a difference if they're turned off. If you happen to come across an episode of the anime, and you're not 100% sure how far it is into the series, there are certain things you can look out for to be able to tell. Firstly, you can tell what region they're in by Ash's clothes. Obviously these are his home clothes, clothes for Sinnoh, Unova, and if he looks like he was drawn by a kid, you know he's an Alola. But another thing to look out for is Nurse Joy, as depending on the colour of the cross on her hat, depends on the town that they're in. Have you ever tried the Pokemon name challenge, where you have a certain amount of time to remember as many Pokemon as you can? Most people do this with only one region, however I recently tried this with every Pokemon and it was not easy. So here are some tips to help you improve at this game. One really helpful tip is to think of specific Pokemon categories, so for example, Pikachu clones, pseudo legendaries, as well as thinking of gym leaders, which can really help you remember certain Pokemon you might have forgotten about. So yeah, think of certain categories. Also, learn the entire Poker app. That's the entirety of Kanto right there. Also, if you would like to see the video where I attempt to remember every Pokemon ever, 
leave a like and I may post it in the future. If you're wanting to get into competitive Pokemon, but are unsure how to practice, then you should try out Pokemon Showdown if you haven't. Not only is it the best Pokemon battling simulator you can use online, you can also create and save teams, play in different formats of almost any Pokemon game, even formats from past generations. It also saves you a ton of time, since breeding and making Pokemon can take a while, and you don't want to waste time making a team and not be happy with it, and then have to make a new Pokemon all over again. Plus, it's just a fun site where you can easily battle people. Here are some free shine you can get in the main series Pokemon games. In Johto, you obviously get the Red Gyarados. The old egg you receive also has a high chance of being shiny, at 14%. That can contain Pichu, Cleffa, Magby, Tyrogue, or Lekid. And even better, in the Japanese version, this is actually a 50% chance to be shiny. In Pokemon Black 2, you can get a free shiny Gibble, whereas White 2 gives you a free shiny Dratini. And in both games, at the very end, the game rewards you with a free shiny Haxorus. In Pokemon Legends Arceus, if you complete a specific side mission, you get to encounter a free shiny Ponyta. Whenever you buy Pokeballs of any kind, make sure you buy them in multiples of 10. 10 of any Pokeballs gives you a free Premier Ball, 20 will give you two free Premier Balls, and so on. So for example, buying 19 Pokeballs for just one Premier Ball does seem a bit silly. If you don't want to spend time finding specific Pokemon that'll help you out against certain gym leaders, here's something else you can do. If you speak to enough people, you'll come across NPCs that are offering to trade Pokemon with you. For example, in Johto, there's a person offering an Onix for a Bellsprout, an Onix that you can use against the flying type gym leader. There is also a Machop trade, a Machop that you can get before the third gym, which is perfect against normal types that Whitney has. If you're someone who's trying their best to avoid potential Pokemon leaks of upcoming Pokemon games, especially when the leaks are getting out of hand, Here's a couple of tips to try and avoid them. If you want a foolproof never see a Pokemon leak ever again, your best bet is to delete the Twitter app and stay away from the site until the games come out. Of course, that's a long time to not use social media. So to help minimize these leaks as much as possible, here are some Twitter ads that I highly suggest muting. Of course, you'll never be able to find every single account that's tweeting and retweeting potential leaks, but these are some of the main ones. Not only that, but muting specific hashtags and names can also help a lot. Here are some of the best methods in the main series games to get a shiny Pokemon easier than normal. One of the quickest is chain fishing. In Gen 6, if you consecutively reel in Pokemon while fishing and do it correctly, the shinyels will raise with each fish until you get to a streak of 20, where the odds will be raised to around 1 in 100, which is much better than the regular odds. The amount of Pokemon you catch is pretty limited, but you can't argue that 1% chance is pretty good for a shiny. Legends Arceus has one of the easiest shiny hunting methods in the form of mass outbreaks. Literally go to a mass outbreak. If you don't get the shiny that you want, reset, make sure the mass outbreak is the same Pokemon you want, and continue to check until you find a shiny. And one of the most famous shiny hunting methods, and in my opinion one of the most satisfying to get done, is radar chaining. This method is a bit more difficult than other methods like chain fishing, but seeing the grass sparkle is always a good feeling. And if you want to learn how to correctly radar chain, I'll leave a link to a video that teaches you how in the description. Did you know that it's possible to skip certain gyms in some Pokemon games? The best example of this is in the Kanto games. Usually, it's impossible to go through Pewter City without battling Brock. However, there's a glitch that allows you to skip this gym, although this is fixed in certain copies of the game. Even better, it's still possible to skip gyms throughout your game without glitches. Because of the HMs required to advance through the game, and the order you get them, it's possible to completely skip gyms like Surge, Erika, and Sabrina, and fight other gyms like Blaine, the seventh gym leader, way before the others. Of course, you still need all gym badges to complete the game, but it's still cool to know that it's possible to beat these gym leaders in almost any order you want. If you're looking for an easy way to grind in Pokemon by getting a Pokemon's level up as quickly as possible, here are some tips on how to do that. The item Lucky Egg doubles the amount of EXP our Pokemon gets, and here's the location in each game where to find it. In past generations, putting a Pokemon into the daycare raises the Pokemon's XP as you move, meaning it's always worth it by storing a couple of Mons, adventuring as normal, then coming back later to see how much your Pokemon have grown. In newer generations, items have been introduced that specifically raise EXP, some as fast, if not faster, than rare candies. 
And finally, in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, there's a specific way of grinding that includes secret bases. It's possible to have a secret base containing an opponent with a team of Blissies, the Pokemon that gives the highest amount of EXP in the game. Grinding against these for a bit is bound to get your levels up fast. If you want to save some money on potions without having to find where all the free ones are, here's a quick tip. In most older Pokemon games, Hyper Potions healed a Pokemon's HP by 200 points and cost 1200 Poké Dollars, whereas Max Potions healed a Pokemon's health to full and cost over double at 2500. If you ask me, don't bother buying Max Potions. Not only are Hyper Potions much better value, but most level 100 Pokemon are fully healed with just two Hyper Potions. And the majority of regular playthroughs, some people barely get their Pokemon past level 50. So Max Potions, while nice to have, usually aren't worth buying, when Hyper Potions are much better value. In later games, Hyper Potions now heal less at 120 health points, but I think I'd still pick them over paying extra for the Max Potion. Alternatively, if you want to save even more money, you don't even have to bother with potions. Some of the best healing items for that price are actually drinks, like soda pop, lemonade, and moo moo milk. The only downside to buying them is that they're usually only available in a single location, and a lot of times you can't buy them in bulk, only one at a time. But comparing their prices and the amount they heal to a potion is just much better value. Moo Moo Milk not only heals more HP than a Super Potion, healing 100 health points, it's also cheaper. Hell, you don't even have to bother with Hyper Potions since Moo Moo Milk heals almost as much, especially in the newer games. Bottom line, Moo Moo Milk is arguably the best healing item in the game for what it costs. There are also medical herbs, which are even cheaper healing and revival items, however they do lower a Pokemon's happiness. So depending on the trade-off, these might be the best healing items for you. You can get Pokemon with specific moves from past generations that can't learn them in current generations by moving them through Pokemon Bank and Pokemon Home. Some great examples of this would be a Machamp with the move Fisher, although if you do this it doesn't get the ability No Guard, and there's a reason why that isn't possible. You can get a Blaziken with Dynamic Punch and Power Up Punch. You can get a Charizard with Metal Claw. You can get a Dragonite with Power Up Punch, Home Claws, Zap Cannon. And you can get a Mewtwo with Bubble Beam, Tri Attack, and Teleport. Yeah, it doesn't learn Teleport by itself. That's pretty dumb. And my last useful fact of the video is... If you never want to miss your favourite Pokemon YouTubers videos ever again, hit subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. If you liked their video, leave a like, and until next time, thank you so much for watching.